Archie's leaving the series, and how she became pals with Megan. Plus, Paula Ferris is live in London to spill tea on the splendor and scandals of tomorrow's royal wedding. And Alyssa Milano's guest co-hosting. Let's, Let's get this party started with Joy Behar, Sarah Haynes, Sunny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. Joining us as guest uh, co-host today, please welcome the lovely and talented actress and activist, Alyssa Milano. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We have a lot to talk to you, but let's just start with this first, because anyone who watches this show knows that I laugh at the White House almost every day. If I can <laughs> laugh, sometimes I cry. <laughs> but they're trying to show that they can laugh at themselves, too. Isn't that mm -hmm. nice? In a new video where they weigh in on the Laurel slash Yanni debate. Take a look. <laughs> so clearly Laurel. <laughs> Definitely Laurel. It's Laurel. But I could deflect and divert to Yanni if you need me to. Yanni's a winner. Laurel's a loser. Sarah, it's been reported that you hear Laurel. How do you respond? Clearly you're getting your information from CNN because that's fake news. Uh, all I hear is Yanni. Who's Yanni? I hear Kofefi. <laughs> you know, usually I say don't quit your day job, but in this case, quit your day job. <laughs> I liked it because we always yeah. say that they they don't laugh at themselves yes. ever and we've said yeah. if you could have a sense of humor then maybe that would help mm -hmm. this is i don't think they should i don't think they should have been as um uh scripted because there are times you can say if they just would have answered honestly it could have been just a little funnier but See, i, I laugh problem answer honestly they can't do that <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, again the dig to the media yeah. which drives me crazy that they can't even oh, make something funny uh, without digging cnn that's right them yeah. on. they're yeah. digging it because that's mm -hmm. her line she always says it so she's right. I, th I took it as making fun of herself like yeah she, I, I loved it I love Kofefe too because I mean <laughs> I was so into the Kofefe thing That's funny. and the fact that he was able to finally maybe poke fun at himself I, I, this I is think a it's step in the right time. direction like, yeah well no he's done it before <laughs> yeah I mean listen I'm not in the mood for any jokes coming out of the White House right now still I, I've got I a lot of issues right now with what they think is funny what they don't think is funny yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not you. on the Good side point. of this I'm, as everybody knows and I just think it's hard for me to find this amusing. I also think there's a way to do comedy. Jo I remember Joe Biden and Julia Louis Dreyfus did this sketch together oh, for the White House Correspondents Center that. that I had tears coming out of my eyes. It was so funny. And I think like, okay, if you're gonna be funny, mm -hmm. get some joke writers in there and make it really funny. And this right. is just kind of like, oh, we're like all Americans and we're laughing, but we're gonna make death jokes still and like all this well, stuff. And I, I don't find if any of this funny or amusing right well, now. Well, they did use mm -hmm. Kofefi as the punchline. Yeah. With the, using yeah. the punchline to deliver the punchline. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so it was had an arc. It was like this. That, 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 and I mean, then they got to. Do the you like line. it? You're the, you're the comedian. Well, it was. It was. It was all right. I mean, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to put it down 100. percent It was somewhat amusing. Okay, that's all. So look, you're giving them more than I am. <laughs> on, yeah. On the Joy Behar curve, that's like an eight. Plus. I, I yeah. say, that's pretty big. Right. I give them a six. I just feel like if this administration was doing things seriously, then they're allowed to poke fun at themselves. Mm -hmm. But because it is all so over the top in this ludicrous way to then poke fun at themselves it's yeah. like we we do that every day like we don't need you doing it either like make some well, real policy to change they, they try uh -huh. to yeah yeah try to show it, they it have an a attempt sense. i just think totally at this moment given yeah. the controversy with the statement that landed wrong or whatever about my dad last week yeah i'm not in the i'm still not you're in the not amused mood. you're not amused but as you know just, i don't always have the best sense of humor joy well you so. know what i think <laughs> you know, I that one day when she got me mad about something. <laughs> but I think it's you true. have. I, I'm not always. I no, totally agree. I don't think that you're mm -hmm. off camera. You have a great sense. You of do. Humor. Sometimes on you're camera. funny off camera. Thanks, <laughs> on camera too. Sometimes on camera. She now she's but she's you notice it's getting. You're better. loosening up. Yeah. We, well, we, we're getting to I you. Was, I, <laughs> oh, I had a rough few weeks and my girls on the view were here for me. So yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So 
Now, Alyssa. <laughs> Let's yes. talk about, about the, uh, you a little bit, because you've been very involved with the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you propelled it, basically, that phrase, did you not? Well, Tarana Burke started this, this movement about 10 years ago, and right. I propelled it on social media with, with the hashtag. And basically, you know, I said if there were any women uh, that had been sexually assaulted or harassed, please just write Me Too, and yeah, you don't have to right. name your... And I woke up seven hours later to 32,000 responses. Unbelievable. And within 24 hours, it had hit 85 different countries and yeah. been tweeted like over 14 million times. So It, it unmasked, so really. It really unmasked. It's significant It was issue. the perfect storm, though, I think, between what was going on with Harvey Weinstein yeah. and mm -hmm. the fact that we elected a president that, you know... Grabs him by the kofefe. <laughs> seeing our rights almost, you know, stripped away. So I just think it was this perfect storm to, yeah. that enabled it, it to become something special. Exactly. And, and a, move, a movement. A necessary yeah. movement. A and necessary the, movement. The other thing is you are close friends, I understand, with uh, Georgina Chapman, who mm -hmm. is Harvey Weinstein's ex-wife at this point. I believe this Ex-wife. The voice is final. Yeah. Yes. And Anna Wintour from, the, from Vogue magazine just defended Georgina, saying that she knew nothing Nothing, but so far, a lot of there are more than 80 women, 80, wow. who have made accusations against Harvey Weinstein. So I have to ask: Is it possible to know nothing when there are 80 women that he allegedly assaulted? Well, I think with men, oftentimes when when uh, uh, something like this comes out, everyone's like, there was a reputation there. I think mm -hmm. when referring to men, often we hear of reputations, but that is kind of philandering, or he's definitely not faithful to his wife. Mm -hmm. I don't think that necessarily translates. Maybe with to Harvey assault. Weinstein, it's different, but to, no. to assault or mm -hmm. harassment or criminal, or criminal activity. activity. Yeah. Reputations can sometimes seem much more. I can tell you this innocent. I've known Georgina for seven years now. We've raised our kids together. I've sat next mm -hmm. to her in Project Runway All Stars. There is no possible way that she knew that he was assaulting women. What do I you think, think she did know? Maybe they had some sort of arrangement or, or a marriage that was open or she was just aware that, you know, maybe he was a, a flirt or someone that could get, mm -hmm. you know, a little too close. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I with there is no doubt in my mind that she did not know that he was potentially raping women. Yeah. There, there's no way. Well, she and I think she's a victim as much as as the women that he hurt is. Sunny. Well, I mean, she said to Vogue magazine that she thought they had a happy marriage and that she didn't know. And, you know, I prosecuted sex crimes against women. Um, and I can tell you a lot, an interfamily sex crimes. And a lot of people came into my office and said, I had no idea that this was going on under my roof. And, mm -hmm. and some of them I believed. Um, and I think, you know, you can, there, there are perpetrators that show one face to one person and are very, very different and demonic to other people. Yeah. So I, I would and believe that perhaps she it? did not know. Part of that disease, that predator behavior, is to be able to hide it really yes, well. And they pick their prey. They put people. Well, there were comedians well, making jokes about it. Seth MacFarlane made a joke about it. SNL, not SNL, uh, Tina Fey's show, um, 30, 30 Rock, Rock. They had a little uh, reference to you it. You accept yeah. the reality of the world you're in, and you don't necessarily look outside mm -hmm. of it. I just know um, from friends of mine who have experiences with like their husbands cheating and just being so blown away yeah. when it came out. But I will say, like my experience with this, and we were talking about this in the green room, is Karen and uh, Georgina uh, designed my wedding dress, right. and I had oh, yeah. bought my wedding dress before the scandal broke. Broke. It broke while we were, it was literally the day before I was going to do a fitting. There's my dress. Mm -hmm. And it's so pretty, it's so by the way. Beautiful. And it's I would just like to say that. So thank you. So thank you very much. They were so lovely to me. Mm -hmm. I got married in a really intensely emotional time. They couldn't have been nicer. Oh, and yeah. I thought at the time, because my publicist was like, are you going to keep the dress right now? And I said, yeah. I'm not going to penalize women for the actions of men. I'm also mm -hmm. not going to penalize this entire company. I love that you wore I that met. dress. Yeah. Thank you very I much. I love that you wore That's that right. dress. I love that yeah. Scarlett Johansson wore Marquesa yeah. to the Met Ball. Yeah.
is not Georgina's fault, yeah. and she's too talented. She's too lovely of a person to not come out of this on the other side and be okay. Well, and I'm just praying so, for her. Just sorry. Yeah. She's so talented. Her designs are so yes. beautiful. And I have to say, for me, I was like with with my my stylist Lauren Sample, who I love. She, I was like, I do not have time, mm -hmm. and I need to find a designer who can fit my body because I have like literally, I had like three days to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, they are designers that fit women with all types of bodies, and, and that's her also go not. Up to a 22, you said. They go up very high. I don't remember the one. I'm at 14, but I just yeah. remember being like, I, it fit perfectly. It was amazing, yeah. and I just think that. Her talent, the part I didn't like was people were saying that she only had these designs or she's only this popular because of him. But her talent, her dresses are arbitrarily gorgeous. Yeah. So, Sunny, read the statement, oh, yeah. please. Okay. Uh, Harvey Weinstein has denied any allegations of non-consensual sex. Yeah, we've heard that. I, I just wanted to add, though, that... <laughs> Um, and he has denied, <laughs> denied uh, non-consensual yeah. sex allegations. I, I just want to add, you know, oftentimes we do blame the wife or the woman for the sins of the man and right. of the husband. Right. And maybe we need to step away from that. Why is she being held responsible for what he did? Well, you know, because she was you know, there, I guess. Yeah. It's like, you know, I don't want to open up a whole can of words, but it's like yeah. Ruth Madoff. She didn't know what her husband was up to. Come on. Well, I think, well, yes, I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, the maf mafia wives, I don't, I don't know anything. The fact that we have this humongous house in New Jersey with a yacht, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know anything. And he says he's going to a construction site every day. <laughs> but should they be? We'll be right back with more. Okay. <laughs> Later. Uncharitable behavior? Why Real Housewife Carol Radswell is slamming Bethany Frankel for her Puerto Rican relief efforts. Next week on The View, they shook up The Bachelor. Now they shake up the table. Ari and Lauren stop by and reveal exclusive details about their upcoming wedding only to The View. And Michelle Wolf goes from roasting Washington to heating up hot topics in her first live television interview since that dinner. Plus, the one and only Snoop Dogg is coming to hang next week on The View. Still ahead, Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, Erica Jane. And Paula's live in London with the latest on tomorrow's royal wedding. Welcome back. So here's more proof that these real housewives of New York can turn anything into a feud. Anything. <laughs> <clears throat> Carol Radziwill is slamming Bethany Frankel for her relief efforts to Puerto Rico hurricane victims, accusing her of making pub a public spectacle out of it to make herself look good. But you know what? I mean, if she's helping people, what's the difference, really? And everything is a photo op nowadays. Especially with housewives on shows. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean... I wish our president would go there for a photo op. Just yeah. to like, <laughs> we, we, haven't heard, we haven't heard about any, any, uh, you know, Puerto Rico is still in a very rough spot and I don't know what this administration is doing, but I'd say good for Bethany. Well, yeah, so Bethany, Bethany, but Bethany is on TV with us? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah. you know, of, of course, um, my heart, you know, I'm Puerto Rican and so I, I think that the work that she has done there um, has been helpful and I think that's wonderful but for me that is just not the true meaning of charity I don't think you go to a disaster area with personal photographers and videographers following you watching you hug people I mean I know a lot of people have reached out to me on social media well what are you doing for Puerto Rico you all know the amount of charitable work that I do because I really believe that you can't live a perfect day unless you do something for someone who can never repay you and I try to live by that no one knows the amount of work that I've done with Puerto Rico. No one knows the amount of charitable work because I do it for people. And I do it because it's the right thing to do. I don't do it so that I can grow a platform. Well, I want to believe so that I, everyone's motivated from the purest part of their heart. But I think there are also tons of people that do it for the... the photographs for the boards they can be on for the attention from friends and to me I'm like write the check 
I don't care why you do it. We'll take it and cash it. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't care why people help people. I'm there not is that question. sunny. You know, it's just, it's, but the also end justifies using the her means. platform to yeah. still raise awareness for something that nobody is talking about anymore, I think is, is really important. Um, I, I don't know that many people would be would be thinking about Puerto Rico if she weren't out there sort but, of. And, it's sort of, and to your point, it sort of shames the administration. Yes. For well, sure. It, it, I, I, again, I mean, I think a lot of people knew what Puerto Rico was going through. There are a lot of us that have been working tirelessly since the hurricane to help the island. Um, but we're working um, because we want to. Behind the scenes. Behind the yeah. scenes. We're not working because we need a, a videographer behind us capturing okay. moments. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, I think it's... I've the charities that I like mm -hmm. have involvement in have a lot to do with veterans and I always think of um, Gary Sinise with the Lieutenant Dan Band mm. and that he goes around to so many different areas and 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 bases and troops and I think he actually is doing something in Coronado this weekend or last weekend and yeah. that there is something to an element of celebrity that gets people excited that's why USO that's tours occur yes, and right. things that's like true. that so I'm not negating that element I if you're mm -hmm. I, I am so mixed on it because I with you like yeah. people are writing the check does it does the motive Motivation matter. I don't know. Personally, on uh, the Real Housewives, I, you know, Real Housewives is total escapism, and it's interesting that they're taking this turn where they're just doing very serious issues that you mm -hmm. know is talked about on the news right now. Yeah, yeah. You should always show the fake housewives. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they do that? Yeah, I'll do that. One. The, okay. the, time. the backlash is growing against New York Attorney Aaron Schlossberg, oh, whose guy. racist rant was caught mm -hmm. on video. Watch this mm -hmm. guy. And your staff yeah. is speaking Spanish to customers when they no, should be speaking English. Very my guess is they're not documented. So my next call is to ice pack each one of them kicked out of my country. Every person I listen to, he spoke it, he spoke it, she's speaking it, is America. I pay for their welfare, I pay for their ability to be here. The least they can do, the least they can do is speak it. Okay, of uh, course. What an idiot. Okay, uh, <laughs> since. <laughs> But since this, since this video went viral, he was booted out of the office space he rents, and there are calls to take away his law license. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maybe he can team up with, um, what's his name, Michael Cohen. <laughs> uh, how much should this guy be punished exactly? I, I think, go ahead. I, I just think for all the evils of social media, this is when it works, right? Because they called out this behavior, and, and I, I think he should be punished. I think there should be consequences for that. What is shocking to me is uh, the United States is one of the only countries where it is prideful to only speak one language. It's like we're one of the only monolingual mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. in the world. Right. I know. So he speaks himself speaks, speaks Spanish, mm -hmm. yet is saying in America you should only speak English. And it really struck a chord with me because I remember growing up with my grandmother who spoke a little bit of English, but Spanish, of course, is her first language. It's my first language as well. And people would say to her, speak of the English. And yeah. I just remember having that mm. experience and as if speaking two languages was something to be ashamed of. Yeah. Well, and I think that's pretty disgusting. Can I say one thing really quick? This happened in Midtown Manhattan. Yes. Um, this is very close to here, Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we think of like outward racism, you think of a certain type of person yes. in the Deep South. This is happening in Midtown with well, a he, lawyer yeah. who lives well, here. Well, he's a Trump voter, first of all. But, but the he point, is. That's I don't, a fact. No, uh, you're saying it's a the, Northeast. But the point is, I think that we need, I think sometimes it's easy to just say, this type mm -hmm. of group of people, this type of person. It shows a different face yes, of racism. A different I face agree, because it's everywhere. Yeah, and but the White everywhere. House sets the tone against immigrants. And so people feel like it's a free day to just go well, after immigrants. Would you immigrants? expect this to no. happen in Midtown Manhattan? And, and born and raised. He, oh. he grew up in Pennsylvania. He went to John Hopkins, George Washington University. University law. He went to a private boys' school. He he has been. He's a well-educated northeastern person. Bigot. That's not what you think. He's a well-educated <laughs> northeastern <laughs> bigot. But they don't normally come together. So I think, I think the, thing, the thing that upsets me the most is that people seem to be wearing their racism on their sleeves. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, exactly. Very yeah, comfortably. Like, they've been comfortably. Comfortably. They're putting like, their scarves like they're, on. They're, they're racist. Like, yeah. they're, they're real proud. comfortable. They're proud. Yeah. It's okay to be proud of being yeah, a racist now. It's awful. But you know, Megan, there yeah. are eight million, at least eight million uh, people in this naked city, and a <laughs> lot of.
know Megan's father, Thomas, is not going to attend because he recently underwent heart surgery. Do we know how he's doing? Yes, but l let me just tell you, I want to contextualize and preface everything that TMZ has been the one reporting the heart surgery and that he had three stents um, that were implanted into one of his vessels. But we can say that Thomas Markle's health has not been great for a long time. He has high blood pressure. He walks with a limb. He badly needs a knee replacement. Um, and, and we have not seen photos. We should say we have not seen photos of Thomas Markle either entering the hospital or leaving the hospital, Megan. Hey, Paula, it's sunny. People are very excited here in the Hi, U.S. Sunny. Hi, babe. I'm extremely excited about this. I'm out of my mind obsessed. As you know, I'll be up at 4.30 tomorrow morning. What is the buzz out there? Not surprised. Not surprised. <laughs> well, you guys, I think, I, I think there's a ton of buzz here, but there's a whole lot of buzz back in America. Two, two reasons, because Harry is the most popular um, uh, popular in the royal family. He is beloved Cute. by everyone. But Cute. also there's a lot of interest because of Meghan. Yeah, he's adorable. Um, <laughs> Meghan is going to be, she's, she's biracial. She's a divorcee. She's an American. History is going to be made. Um, but a whole lot of buzz. If you want, I can bring you guys back one of these. Um, it's an official replica of the engagement ring. I want um, it! I want it! You want that? Yeah, we all do. I want it! A flat <laughs> All Who right. wants it? I have an extra one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go to the, I think Joy knows if, Joy knows it's going to go to her. Just go to the store and buy a bunch of them. We'll yeah. give you the money back. Yeah. Okay, I will. <laughs> I don't know if we have it in the budget. <laughs> uh, you know who else looks great? The old guy, Prince Philip. He's still He's cute. Handsome. He's still yeah. cute. 97. God. All right. So, okay, AB News, ABC News Royal Wedding coverage starts at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, and Sonny will be there. And there's an extended edition of GMA <laughs> happening. Robin Roberts and David Muir lead live coverage from Windsor, England. Thank you, Paula. Have fun. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Bye. So you just wrote an article in Time magazine um, uh, where you open up about your ang you have an anxiety disorder. Yes. And you I talk about it. I have a mental illness, and I am going to say it just like that because I feel like there is such a stigma around mm -hmm. mental illness. And I want people to know that if you have anxiety, depression, whatever your mental illness may be, you are not alone. And it just makes me feel better to know that I'm not alone. And I know you struggled yeah. with postpartum. Yeah. Well, and uh, there are 44 million Americans that are suffering from mental illnesses. Um, just uh, under the latest Trump tax plan passed in December, 13 million Americans will lose health insurance. So to me, I think we have to rededicate ourselves to really making mental illness a priority yeah. um, and, and to give people the services that they need to to be better, to feel better, um, because... What, what it, happened to you? Hmm. Well, I've struggled with anxiety disorder my whole life, but after I had my son Milo, it got really bad, and it was postpartum anxiety, and I felt uh, just overwhelmed, and I was working at the time, and, and it, it, you know, for me, my anxiety manifests itself at, very physically, like I get a knot in my stomach where it feels like someone's wringing out a washcloth and I get shaky mm. and I can't breathe and... Um, like a panic attack. It's a panic attack, but it's, it's, it's generalized, so it's always in that state and then a panic wow. attack on top uh -huh. of that would I be... See. Wow. So it was very difficult being a new mother, um, dealing with, with that. I, I had myself committed. I actually went to a mental institution. A you walked in yourself? I asked, I went into an emergency emergency room and asked to speak to the psychiatrist and oh. had them drive me to because I felt like I couldn't I couldn't do it on my own and people I looked to totally fine and that's the thing mm -hmm. with mental illness yeah. is you look yeah. totally fine and I needed help and people just kept telling me you're fine you could go for a hike mm -hmm. it's a big change yeah. having a baby and I I knew I wasn't okay so what I did they really, do for you well you know it was intensive talking and and treatment and and really just kind of 
figuring out if there was a pattern that went on, what my triggers were. I mean, obviously, I'm a, a, also a sexual ab ab abuse survivor, so a lot of it had to do with that. And right. childbirth, which I don't think people talk about, that if you're a sexual abuse survivor, it is very difficult to give birth huh. because it's such an invasive procedure. It is. Uh -huh. um, and, and I think more people need to talk about that before women give birth. Um, and really, this issue of mental health uh, right now is really important because we're going to see more Americans losing their coverage, losing their insurance, and less access to the help that they need. And um, we're seeing, you know, this administration blame a lot of these mass shootings, um, which we had uh, another one this morning. Texas. Um, in Texas. Santa Fe, uh, Texas. Santa Fe, Texas. We see this administration <laughs> blaming um, these mass shootings on mental illness. Um, and I just want to say, if that's, if that's what you're going to blame it on, then you've got to step up to the plate and do something for the people of this country. then I think the NRA should stand up there and help us fund mental health programs throughout the country and get people the help that they need. But we should also say uh, mentally ill people are less likely That's right. to commit yeah. these We're more murders. likely yes. to hurt ourselves yes. than we are other people. Exactly. Right, and we if you are. don't have the right insurance, you can't just walk into a, into a facility the way you did. The, no, the, I mean, I was so blessed. Right. I, had, blessed. I, had, I had people around me that could help. What does the woman, what does the mother do that doesn't there you have go. Very people? More Thank you. That's Thanks right. for telling everybody that's that. Right. That's very Thank brave. Thank you. Brave. Yeah. Alyssa has also, she's working. She's beautiful. There's a new series streaming on Netflix later this year called Insatiable. We'll be right back. Why does Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, Erica Jane, say it takes 40 grand a month to be her? And is she really leaving the show? She's live on The View next. All of Washington, everyone was talking about her. People were outraged by Michelle Wolf's material. If a tree falls in the woods, how do we get Kellyanne under that tree? So did she go too far? She is there to come and push the envelope. That's what comedians do. A lot of Republicans I know were really angry about this. I thought it was distasteful. So now, what's Michelle Wolf have to say? Well, Wednesday, in her first live television interview since that dinner, you can be sure she won't hold anything back. music star and Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, Erica Jane, is my perfect escape from the dumpster fire happening in politics right now. <laughs> so the rumors better not be true that she's leaving the show. Please welcome author of the new book, Pretty Mess, the one, the only, Miss Erica Jane. It's My girl. I love yeah. you. I love you. So we are friends. We are we friends. Are. We became friends because we were both on Watch What Happens Live and one bleached blonde to another. Obviously, <laughs> you are the mothership of all things good. You tweeted this picture saying yes. Erica has left the building and panic attacks went through my group of friends. You are possibly oh, leaving wow. every Housewives of Beverly Hills. For the good of America, this can't be true. Please tell me that it isn't. I was channeling Elvis and everybody had a meltdown. Oh. I mean, you know, let a girl live. You know the answer. Get your, you, she is not <laughs> leaving. I'm not oh. leaving. <laughs> okay, and you're a, a singer, a dancer. You're known for your style and over the top looks. You've said it takes forty thousand dollars a month to be Erica Jane, but can you clarify what that means? I yeah. can, and thank you for what bringing that up. What kind of face up. cream are you using? Well, not <laughs> <laughs> Um, you look amazing. Thank you, you babe. I mean, I'm Thank like you. this close. Thank you. No, hard costs, hair, makeup, accessories, okay. you know, work stuff, Beauty work stuff. expenses. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. a lot of money. It is. 
But it's for worth. sure. You're telling the person uh, that right not to yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You're telling. <laughs> yes. I found it interesting that you, in your late 30s, you had a complete career change, or you were, I don't know what your career was before, but you were basically a housewife, I understand. That's right. I grew up in performing arts, and at yeah. 35, I decided I wanted to get back in, and so I did. I put one foot in front of the other. How did you do that? People need a couple of details. Um, you know, I decided that I was unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. And got back to arts and, mm -hmm. and just really put myself out there. Well, and was I, there a trigger? I mean, mine was caused by poverty. What was yours? <laughs> <laughs> mine was caused by, well, I just didn't want regrets at the end of my life. Uh -huh. And I had grown up in the theater, and I thought, you know what? I need to go back. And now you yeah. became yeah. this big dancing star. I just, just an whatever. Whatever. Pop star. An entertainment, an Thank entertainment you. star. This was interesting to me. Your husband, Tom Girardi, yes. is 32 year old. 33. 33 year old. Yeah, wow. I thought it was 32. <laughs> 33 years older than you are, and the age difference always seems to come up with people. It does. Um, even though we've been together 20 years, married 18. Uh, yeah, but I think it's like one of those old cliches. You know, you couldn't possibly have anything in common. You couldn't possibly yeah. like the same things, but that's You got not married true. for the money, stuff All like that. All of that. Yeah. I understand I mean, he's the, he was the lawyer in the Aaron Brockovich case. He's the person that tried. Yeah, he's trial attorney, yeah. yeah. The person who was played by um, Coyote, Peter Coyote. Peter Coyote played. Remember that's the movie? It. That's oh, right. He must, be, wow. he must be so inspiring wow. to be married. That's, so. Well, that's... I'm glad you said that because that's a lot of the reason that I had the courage to go be Erica Jane was because of my husband, oh, you know, lovely. and watching him and he's been totally supportive. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Well, that's I read cool. the book and oh, you did? Uh, cool. I did. Uh, <laughs> and and you talk so much about your childhood and how you were always a performer, which I thought was so uh, because I was yeah. a performer at seven mm -hmm. years old. Yes, so I, I, watched I, you. I, I, I <laughs> So I totally get it. But what I was most fascinated by was your relationship with your mother, sure. which seems like there's a lot of love there but it also seems like she didn't always mm. um, speak to you as kindly as you would have liked so I'd love to hear from your perspective because I'm raising a little girl mm. well I feel like my mother was treating me the way the world was treating her and I think she you know yeah. she was a single mom um, young and she wanted me to stand on my own two feet and to be strong and I think that that's what her intent was well, and you know we have a great a relationship love. a little bit you know but um, we have a great relationship. We speak every day, and I love her very much. And I wouldn't have it any other way, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that there's conflict in every mother-daughter relationship. That's why I asked. And yeah. you know what? Oh, I'm already no, seeing it. My no. daughter's three. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> just you wait. Yeah. I mean, wait. You know, there's no there's no perfect mother-daughter relationship. There's no perfect parent. No, mm -hmm. there certainly yeah. isn't. Parenting is the only thing you could fail at every single day. <laughs> and still do it again. And still have to keep they doing it. Fire you know, you. Erica, yeah. you and I receive the same kind of criticism, which is why I think I bonded with you originally. We're both icy. We're both cold. We all are. the things. It's terrible, Megan. Terrible. <laughs> and I have to say, you and I also feuded with the same housewife. I unintentionally got into a big feud with Teddy oh. Mellencamp <laughs> for saying that she's boring, which you still are, and I'm not taking it back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that she was a good addition to the show? My friend Yolanda Hadid, who brought me onto the show, said it best. Each woman fills a specific slot. Everyone bonds to their favorite girl. Mm. Someone may like you, someone may like her. You know, so there's enough for everyone. If everyone was the same, the show would be boring. Mm -hmm. It's like so the view. It's <laughs> like it is. It's very much uh -huh. like The View. Yeah, no bitch on this show's boring, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, final question I have for you. I didn't get to have a bachelorette party because I had to get married very quickly. You were so sweet when you found out I was engaged. You said, I want to perform at your bachelorette party. I want to do a post-marriage bachelorette party. Will you please perform at Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Oh, Can I I'm on a plane to Vegas right after this, and if you weren't busy, I'd take you with me. I but would. Wow. Let's would. plan this out, and yes, I will. I would. Can I love come, to Megan? Can I come? Amazing. Yeah. Come, no phones, no come. cameras. Okay. We'll have a good time. Oh, I don't. Because I don't do that anyway. <laughs> I Erica, I, I'm obsessed with you. I love you. You genuinely have inspired me in a really dark oh, time in my life. Star. I really do. Watch the show, Joy. Shut All right. Please, our for the one and only Erica Jane. Members of our audience are going home with her book, Pretty Mess. <laughs> Junior Deal and salute to a maverick. How Megan's dad, Senator John McCain, is opening up about his service, sacrifice, life, and legacy like never before.
Thank you, Scare. We will look forward to that interview about your the, dad. The filmmakers and my dad's longtime speechwriter are coming on, and Sonny's in the documentary. Thank you. Yeah. Melissa <laughs> Milano for guest hosting. Have a great day. Have a